Where he leads me, I will follow with his rod and staff to guide me up the mountain, through the valley. You're always there to save and keep me, and I will rest under the shadow of God's wings. My soul follows path after thee, and I will rest under the shadow of God's wings. My soul follows path after thee, where he leads me, I will follow. With your rod and staff to guide me up the mountain, through the valley, you're always there to save and keep me, and I will rest under the shadow of your wings. My soul follows high after thee, and I will rest under the shadow of your wings. My soul. Follows high after thee where God leads me. I will follow with his rod and staff to guide me up the mountain, through the valley. It's always there to save and keep me where God leads me. I will follow with his rod and staff to guide me up the mountain, through the valley. You're always there to save and keep me, and I will rest under the shadow of God's wings. My soul follows high after thee, and I will rest under the shadow of God's wings. My soul follows high after thee. My soul. Follows high after thee. My soul follows high. My soul follows high. My soul follows high after thee. Greetings, everybody. Welcome once again. It's your favorite girl, Princess Kitty, the Queen of Hearts and Laughter. <laughs> I'm here we get to know who we are in Christ. The Bible says the things we can and cannot do, we should or should not do, so that we can live a successful Christian life here on earth and end up spending eternity with God in heaven. Heaven in view, that's the whole idea. And while we're at it, we get to study the King James Version of the Bible, creating an audio Bible for your faith growth. And then we also study the Word so that it can become a practical reality for you. Yeah, you can live the Word. Talk is cheap. Even the devil spoke the Word of God. It was the Word of God that the devil was given to Jesus after his 40 days and 40 nights experience in the wilderness. He wasn't talking gibberish. He was speaking the Word of God. He was speaking facts. But... That you can talk the word of God is not all that is to it. But leaving the word, that's what makes the entire difference. That's what the devil cannot do. That's what the enemy cannot do. He just cannot do it. Right? So yes. Thank you all amazing people for being here. Thank you for always stopping by. For always coming up on a chapter a day. Normally, after singing, we get to pray and hand over the session to God. And then the newest of them all, testimony time. And then we go to the birthday party, birthday prayer, Bible party, creating the audio Bible, and then studying the word of God. And then we pray for whatever God tells us to pray for. And then we go ahead and thank God for an amazing session because we always get to have an amazing session. It has been a beautiful April season. We are loving all that is happening on here. We are loving all that the Lord is doing. It's been an awesome season or some time in the presence of god we are totally and completely grateful we do not take this for granted and so yes guys um there's some important things here that i want us to talk about and then we are going to get on with what we have for today so our birthday party is going to be taken after right after the testimony and the prayer right after the prayer and the testimony so let's pray father we thank you for this day that you made rejoice i'm glad in it we thank you for your faithfulness your loving kindness your tender mercies 
We thank you for all that you have done, you're doing, and you're still to do. Because in everything, you work for good to them that love and serve you and are called according to your purpose. But I will give you all the praise, all the honor and adoration because you deserve it. You are God all by yourself. There is none like unto thee. Amongst the gods who is like thee, you're glorious in holiness. You're fearfully in praises, always doing wonders. Lord, we worship you. We exalt you. We magnify you. You are the great I am that I am. You are the mighty man in battle. You are the beginning and the end. You are the first and the last. Lord, we pray today, O oh Lord, that it's going to be you and you alone that will be seen, felt, heard, and experienced throughout this edition of a chapter today. Lord, that no eye or tongue of us will be seen. We will totally fizzle out while you increase. So it's going to be all about you. You'll be the focus and the center. Lord, let whatever we do here today be redirected and directed towards you. That the people are going to love upon you. The people are going to serve you. The people are always going to want to do you. Because you're a faithful father. You're an awesome God. Lord, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor and adoration. Because you deserve it. Thank you, ancients of days. Thank you, everlasting father. You are the amazing God. You are awesome in this place. There is none like unto thee. There is none who can be compared unto thee. All other gods before your throne of grace are idols. Father, we are forever grateful. We do not take for granted all that you do. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the days to come. Thank you for all the amazing things you've done in our lives. You're doing and you're still to do. Take preeminence, put now forever, mom, because you deserve it. For every single person who gets to be a part of a chapter a day today, Lord, speak to them in a very special way. Answer all their heart desires. Lord, the expectations of the righteous will not be cut short today. Everyone will come to you on an expectation. There will be a birthing of manifestations and good things happening all around. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Ancients of Days. Thank you, King of Glory. Thank you, Mighty Man in Battle, because you deserve all our praise. Receive all our praise, but now and forevermore. You are God who never sleeps or slumber. You never fail. You never change. Thank you, Lord. For in Jesus' mighty and blessed name, we pray with thanksgiving. And all the saints, every single one of them, shall say a ginormous amen, amen, and amen. Amen, people. Okay, guys, so let's get on. Testimony time. Guys, today has really been a good day for me. Well, I've had a little bit of not very good news, but I've also had good news, right? So my key brother, he he kind of wrote this exam, and that day he, he was really feeling a little bit down, kind of like he said he was too information jammed, and so he did a whole lot of things, and he thought that he got some things mixed up and jumbled up and all of that. Guess what? He had an A grade in the course. I told him, don't worry, just be calm. You did well. If you didn't write out of topic, then I know that you're going to do fine. And of course, you did fine. And yes, that is very, very much exciting. And then another thing happened as well. So I have this, my prayer partner, my sister, my friend, my confidence, and all of that. Evangelist, Mary Favor. So... We're going on and we, we normally have our prayers on particular days. And so um, I think yesterday, which is Wednesday, we normally have prayers as well. So we're doing these prayers. And then there was this thing that she was crying out to God for and saying God should help her about it. God should give her the grace to be able to do it. And we really prayed our hearts out. Like we were so into it. We really wanted God to come through for us. One thing I've realized with both of us is this, that sometimes God can be saying something to one person and it's for both of us. So I don't take for granted anything, like any prayer requests that we have, anything that we're praying for each other. We have days we pray for each other. We have days we pray for general things that concerns us and even our family members and our friends and all of that. We have all of those days, right? God gave us like that. And it's really beautiful being in the fellowship of one another in the fellowship and the presence of God is really beautiful, guys. It's beautiful. So we have this prayer request that we're praying so hard and we're giving all our hearts out to stuff like that. And it was basically this. We are praying so hard that at every point in time we should do God's will, not man's will. And we should not be emotional about it. You know, 
Because there are times where maybe your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, your aunt, your uncle, your niece or nephew might be in a kind of situation and you, you, you feel like you want to do something for them. And then the Lord brings another scenario, another situation to you and then tells you that deal with this situation first. And I've had that example before where my kid brother was practically like seriously sick i think he was even taken to the hospital if i'm not if i'm not mistaken that day yeah my kid brother was actually taken to the hospital and then there was this guy who was like then we just got to know each other we're not really being very close as we are today though and he kept declaring all the time that he's an atheist he doesn't believe in god and blah 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 and all of that kind of stuff so i remembered he needed something he needed help some amount of money like you know and the Holy Spirit was telling me to give him that money I'm like God my brother is your son he loves you he's seven years in the hospital he needs help you're telling me to help someone who doesn't even care about you who doesn't like you know how like that so based on emotions I could have gone I could have just as much gone to give my brother that money right based on emotions that's my younger brother it's my blood for crying out loud this is just an acquaintance then we're not really friends you know I, I didn't know that God wanted us to become friends and then let him rub off of whatever I have that God has put in me and so I was like yeah, God what are you saying that doesn't make sense no it's but if I went if I didn't go on what God was telling me and I went on emotions I would have probably got into trouble I have got into trouble sometime like that because I went by emotions Instead of going by what God was telling me, I went by emotions and I suffered the consequences. So I learned. And there, I, as much as I was fighting, I got to a point where I'm like, God, I'm going to do what you want me to do. And as soon as I accepted in my heart, I'm not even giving the guy the money. I just accepted in my heart that I was going to do what God wanted, to, wanted me to do. They called me and told me that my younger brother was home. That it was just something that happened and whatever, but he's fine. That was just a test. Imagine. I could have put my brother's life in danger by wanting to sow a seed that I'm supposed to have sown in some other person's life in his life. And then you get into trouble. You understand? So we're praying so hard and we're crying out to God and saying that the Lord should help us to listen to him and him alone at every point in time and not people. It doesn't matter who the person is. It doesn't matter how close we are to the person or bonded we are to the person. If God is telling us to do something, we should do what God is telling us to do, not what people want us to do. So, my dearest, dearest, I woke up this morning to a message that needed me to do one of those things that has to do with emotions as opposed to what God is telling me. And I was torn between it and then I went to my sister and we prayed about, we just spoke about it. I was able to air and vent and all of that and then I just became calm, you know. Sometimes we need this kind of people in life. I tell you the truth. I don't take this sister that God gave to me for granted because you don't have such people. Like it's rare to find such people. Today people say they're Christians. It's just talk. And talk is cheap. You don't see people who say they're Christians and they really, really live the Christian life, the Christ life. Christians mean like Christ. But a lot of people carry that name around and they are nothing like Christ. Welcome, Mr. Ohakeme Matthew. Thank you for coming. Hope I pronounced your name right. If I didn't, forgive me. They don't get it at all. So you see, today I was just so happy. And like when we're praying, she was praying and crying out because she was supposed to meet some people and... She's just like, she doesn't want them telling her contrary from what she has already heard from God. Because sometimes you'll be, it might make you to start doubting what God said to you. Like, you know, so she doesn't just want to get that encounter at all. And it was me who woke up to get the encounter. Like, go by what God says. Go by what God says. It doesn't matter who is saying what. You know, the Lord taught me um, some time ago a lifelong lesson about the young and the old prophet. The young prophet heard from God and he had no business listening to what the old prophet was already saying. It was already a red flag, considering the fact that you're a young prophet. And there's an old prophet in that town. And God moved you from your town and brought you to this town to come and deliver a message. It was already supposed to be a red flag. 
that you should not be listening to that person because God could just as much as use him already. Plus, he's an old prophet, right? So it was not based on his longevity in service. God was not using him because he was not usable. And so you listening to what he's saying? It's crazy. And I'm sure that's what made the guy not to even pray and ask God to forgive him or help him so that that thing should not happen. Because once he had heard the old prophet had said, oh, today you're going to meet your doom. Yeah, the one who has already told me that I should eat. And then all of a sudden you're not telling me that I'm going to meet my doom. Probably you're still lying. You're still on the lying spree. So let me just ignore you. No, that was too late. You had already done the wrong thing. So you had to make right with God before ignoring his lying spree. Sometimes some prayers are just important for you to pray. If you were going to be affected negatively, it would have been averted because you pray. If you are not going to be affected negatively, that's fine too. It's a win-win, you know. As opposed to not praying and then you needed to pray and then you get in trouble. Look at the young prophet was destroyed. Maybe that was not the time that he was supposed to die. Yes, I know. It's possible. But he died because he listened to the wrong person. And he was probably thinking, oh, this man is older than me. This man is an older prophet. So he probably hears God very well, you know, for him to have said that God said. There are people, lots of people in this our generation who are saying God said when God didn't say even the word of God has told us that. So we better learn. We better learn before we have it hot on our lives. Welcome, Mr. Julian Fabio. Welcome, Agent Wara. Welcome, Naneng. Welcome, Tirak. Welcome, Marcel. Welcome, Annie. Welcome, Hino Groom. And welcome to Mr. Ohakeme Matthew. Thank you all for being here. Thank you all for being a part of the chapter today. And today our Bible party is taken from the book of Amos chapter 9. This is the last chapter of this book. And then we'll be going to the book of... Who knows? Uh, put it in the comment section and you might get to win something. Only for those who are in the live session. If you come and put it later, you're not going to win nothing. If you're here before this thing ends and you put the next book that we're going to do, you definitely get a gift. So... After the book of Amos, what's the next book? Yes. So today we're doing Amos chapter 9, and it has 15 verses. Amos chapter 9, and it has 15 verses. Hi, Glenzy. Hi, Marisol. Hi to each and every one of you who is here today. So let's celebrate the birthday, people. Now it's time for the birthday party. Birthday party. Birthday, birthday party. Yay. Birthday party, birthday, birthday party, yay, birthday party. Welcome, evangelist, and Mary Favor. You got long life, darling. I was just talking about you. Welcome on board. We love you, always. So let's go. It's birthday party time. Let's celebrate these people together. The first person is Best Point Tube. Best Point Tube. And I got to know him on Facebook. We became very good friends and uh, he supports my work, encourages me and gets to make me see the best on me. Oh yeah, you can go ahead. You can go ahead and share your testimony. Please, please come and share your testimony. Come and share your testimony. So I got to know him on Facebook and we became very good friends and all of that. It's like really beautiful he's into the entertainment and media industry and he's doing a really great work there um i'm grateful for knowing him i'm grateful for all that he gets to do for me i do not take it for granted god bless you evangelist favor come and give your testimony come on come and give your testimony yeah <laughs> testimony time okay is Mr. Tar Joyce, okay? Mr. Tar Joyce, we went to the same high school together. He was one of those persons that was always looking out for me. They had this crew where they'll just take care of me for when I say no reason, I just, I don't know, maybe God just favored me like that and he raised people that would just be there to support me and take care of me and look out for me like 
And he said, Tell Joyce to look out for me till date. And I remember when I wanted to do my business, I told him that I needed to add my capital and all of that. He supported me. I was really grateful. I did not take it for granted. And then there was this time I wanted to do what again? He still supported. He's that nice and that cool. Thank you so much, Mr. Tadjo. It's a great father, great husband. And I mean, just all right, amazing friend and all of that. Welcome, Evangelist M. You're welcome. <laughs> How are you today? Oh, my God. So grateful. I know. Oh, I can imagine. With all your plans, 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 Can I share my testimony? Yes, you can. can. Of course. Over to you. A tray. I wish you could see what is on my tray. Oh, I'll cry. 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 No, don't, don't cry. Okay, let me not show you. Anyway, so I did not have money today, and I had some rice at home. And uh, I decided to boil my rice and just put my banana oil and tell myself, well, at least I have rice. So that's right. what I'm going to eat today. And then I had to go and visit it, my father in the Lord, you know. And um, I had some fruit that I tried to make some fruit juice to take to Mama tomorrow. So I said, let me make some and take to my father. So I took the fruit juice. I dressed like this. I had no prank on meal. So when I went there, they had just finished eating. And then they were telling me that, oh, this was left over from yesterday. So they leave just two of them. So they don't really have and everything. And he was asking me what I have to eat at home. I said, me, I don't have nothing. I've just bought my small rice that I'm just going to go and eating me like that. I thank God for that rice. So now Mama was saying, I asked that he's a sardine in the house. He, has, he said, no, there's no sardine, but he has this 500 in his pocket. So he gave me 500 francs. Baby, 500 was like 5 million. Oh my. I went to the market. I bought, bought an egg. I bought carrot for 100. I bought one cucumber, you know, and I came back home. And chop on your and I have a whole meal and a cup of my own smoothie that I have kept. I'm so God. happy. Thank God. My God. And this was that journey that you were praying so hard about. You see, see, God is God is God is too faithful. God is just maybe your viewers can see my food. Oh, it's so <laughs> God, there is God, oh, there is God, oh. <laughs> and baby will come up and eat that rice, right? and I will take some to Allen tomorrow. I, I oh, mean, I'm that's over to I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. So you have something to take to them. You're not just going like empty, empty handed kind of thing, you know? It's beautiful. God is concerned about everything that concerns us. That's the truth. And we should believe it. Sometimes we feel like, oh, some things are too petty. Someone will be like, food? Like, you know, you're, you're not kind of. Aren't you supposed to eat? The Bible says that I wish that you'd be in good health and prosper, even as your soul prospers. He's, con he's concerned about you being healthy. Because if your body is not healthy, you will not be able to carry that spirit. Yeah. If this body is not good, it's not fine, it cannot carry your spirit to do whatever you have to go about what? doing. So we cannot afford to neglect. Yeah, we cannot afford to neglect our bodies because oh no, we are spiritual beings. We're spirit people, you know. Kind of. I love it when you always do your exercise, Habi. It's healthy. It's keeping fit. See ya. Oh, Evangelist Mary Fever is giving us her testimony. I'm so glad. She always has this really great and simple and straightforward testimonies that bless your soul and yes these are some of the things that sometimes we ignore but they are very very important and very necessary in our lives you want to eat god is concerned about what you eat god is concerned about you eating good food too right it's not just like oh yeah every time it has to just be that i have to manage it like this manage it like that no but first the first part is contentment she was contented with what she had 
and then she went and then God added to what she had. She was grateful and contented with what she had. But a lot of us, we don't get those future blessings. Those blessings are here because we are hardly ever contented with what we have. Somebody might have left the house grumbling and complaining. I'm serving God. See the kind of thing that I'm going to end up eating today. Rice and granola oil. Now it's this said, ah, Papa God, you need to see me so. Look me fine. Papa, why did suffer so? Lord, thank you that I'm alive. Thank you that I have rice to eat. There are people, I've been seeing adverts on Gaza and all these places where the children are just looking for something to put in their mouth. And then you have rice, you have oil, you have stuff. And you're complaining because you don't have meat, you don't have fish. Like, seriously? We need to learn how to be grateful. An attitude of gratitude brings a lot of beautiful things. Hi, Saha Maiva. Welcome, welcome, welcome. God bless you. Hi, Mary Bitara. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So the last person on our birthday book is Mr. Peter Alfred Auger. Mr. Peter Alfred Auger, we actually got to know each other as well on Facebook. We became very good friends. He's one who loves God with passion and passion. And so he was really impressed by the fact that someone like me is serving God and preaching the gospel to the ends of the earth. And so he decided to support me and encourage me all the times that I get to do that. A lot of people get to be surprised that I love God and I'm unashamed about um, calling on God and talking about God to the world. And I'm unapologetic about it. I'm not sorry. I don't feel shy. I don't feel ashamed. But believe me, God has brought me this far. He brought me from somewhere. I wasn't comfortable when he told me this was what I was going to do for the same reasons that people are surprised that I'm doing it. Because of course, people are going to make fun of me. People are going to laugh me to scorn. There are a couple of people that do that. It's okay too. It's okay. They laughed at Jesus. They spat on him. They, made, they, they laughed him to scorn. They, they just belittled him to the least of the least of the least that they could. People did all kinds of nonsense and nasty things to Jesus. I've not even gone through even one one million of what Jesus went through, so I can't even say. Some of the disciples went through the same thing. We've realized that lots of people who love God and are serving God go through the same thing. So we can't afford to be afraid. And the Bible said it himself, that those who are ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of them in front of my father. Those who are bold and proud about me, I'll be proud of them in front of my father. So it's in your court. The ball is in your court. Will God be proud of you? Yes, he would if you're proud of him to the world. Will he be ashamed of you? You'll be ashamed of you if you're ashamed of him to the world. So when we get to understand the things, when we get the understanding of all these things, when we get to know what God is saying concerning the things, then boom, it works. It does. Okay, guys. So let's get going. Happy birthday to you, Mr. Best Portube. Happy birthday to you, Mr. Todd Joyce. Happy birthday to you, Mr. Peter Alfred Olga. We're glad to have you all as people on our birthday book today. And right now, we're going to pray for every single person who is born on this day. Yes, today. If you're born today, we're praying for you. So it's not just about the people who are in my birthday book. It's about every single person who is born today. This prayer goes to you all. And yet, they say your conviction and convenience does not live in the same block. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you want to take on your convictions and do what the Lord is convicting, to, convicting you to do, it would hardly ever be convenient. That's why I told you guys my testimony, right? I was telling you how I was saying that I wanted to give the money to my younger brother. That's convenience. It's convenient for me to help my younger brother as opposed to helping someone who is outrightly saying that they don't serve God. It's convenient for me. But hey, my conviction is obedience is better than sacrifice. Obey God. What God says is paramount to whatever you think or feel. Or, I mean, it's, it's just like that. And so if you're convicted, you will not be able to stay in convenience block if you're a person of conviction. Because most of the things that you'll be convicted of, 
they will get you so uncomfortable. They will inconvenience you. Yes, they would. Okay. So, guys, that's it for today on our birthday book. We are praying for the birthday people, and then we'll come right on to the Bible party. And like I said, our Bible party today, taken from the book of Amos chapter 9, and it's the last book, is the last chapter of this book. And we'll be going to the next book already. Every single person, whoever tells me the next book might get a gift, except evangelist Mary Favor. <laughs> So let's go, guys. Let's pray. If you're just signing on, this is a chapter a day, aka a card for short. On here, we get to know who we are, who we are in Christ, and what we can and cannot do so that we can live a successful Christian life here on earth and end up spending eternity with God in heaven. Heaven in view. That's the whole idea. And then we do the testimony, we do the birthday party, birthday prayers, and then we do the singing as well. We also create the audio Bible and we study the word of God together. That's exactly what we do on a chapter a day. And we pray, 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 and pray, and pray, and pray. So if you're a person who doesn't like prayer, well, that's okay. But if you're a person who loves prayer, then of course you're going, you're going to love the other parts of the chapter a day. Yeah, that's not fair because you're a woman of God on fire. I want to give an opportunity to these other people who probably might not like God so much to go and find out. <laughs> it says, Evangelist, remember to tell me more about crucifying your convenience. See, woman of God, that thing is it's not funny. Like you have to nail it to the cross, like nail it, let it die. Convenience has to die. If you have to be a person of conviction, then your convenience has to die because it's never convenient to follow your convictions. It's never. I See, I've not seen any time that it was convenient for me to follow my convictions because your convictions are always crazy, especially if they're from God. They're always crazy. They're always wild. It's not funny. And sometimes, Sometimes, if you tell people, humanly speaking, they will feel sorry for you and they might take you out of your convenience. Yeah, that's the truth. That's the truth. That's the truth. Okay, guys. So, yes, we are going. We're going, 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 going. Let's pray for the birthday people and get this Bible party started. Father, we thank you for all these amazing people who are born today. We thank you for opening the windows of heaven, pouring out the choices of your blessings, and rebuking every devourer from their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for causing them to increase in wisdom and stature, gaining favor before God and before men. We thank you, O oh Lord God, for doing in their lives that which no man can do but you alone. We thank you for opening doors to them that no man can shut and shutting every door that is not of you in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for blessing them with the choices of your blessings. We thank you, O oh God, that as this blessing encompasses them as a shield round about, no weapon formed or fashion against them shall prosper. And any tongue that rises against them in judgment, you shall condemn. Lord, we say thank you. We really do appreciate you for all that you have done, you're doing, and you're still to do in their lives. In Jesus' name. Thank you for causing them to increase in wisdom and stature, getting favor before God and before men. Thank you for causing their gifts to make a way for them, making them to stand before kings, not before me, man. Lord, we thank you, oh God, for how far you brought them. Thank you for opening these beautiful pages upon their lives and writing beautiful stories that will bring them dancing, singing, rejoicing, jubilation, and celebration. We thank you for perfecting all that contents them. Give them Psalms 126 state, a state of continuous laughter, singing, rejoicing. And this will be their best birthday yet. Lord, I pray, oh God, but you're going to teach them all that it takes to not only get to the top, but get there and stay there permanently. You're the one who leads one up and brings down another. Lord, cause them to be trailblazers, space setters, and watching us in the mighty name of Jesus. Give them all that it takes to go and conquer their world. Lord, the expectations will not be cut short. As they come to dine and sup with you, oh God, it's going to be a balanced diet. Lord, you will do beyond their wildest imagination. Because you say we should call on you and you answer us and show us great and mighty things which you've never known. Let that be a practical reality for each and every one of them now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we are forever grateful to you. We are forever grateful for the cross that you came to seek and save the lost. Lord, we are totally and completely grateful. We do not take for granted all that you do with us, in us, and around us. We do not take all that you do for granted that you do for us. Father, take all the glory of God. Bless these people. 
give them many more years if you tarry to come so that they're going to be able to do your will father cause them to stay in line with what you've called and created them to do lord even as they're fulfilling purpose oh god that if they get to a place where they feel overwhelmed they feel like they want to give up or back out they'll hear a clean loud clear voice saying this is the way walk down you they will not derail they'll not shred they'll stay on course and after it all glory be given unto your holy name O oh lord father let it be a blessing in that generation and beyond yes father even as people come in contact with them let them literally rub off of the blessings that are upon their lives father we are forever grateful we say thank you we give you all the praise we give you all the honor and adoration because you deserve it you are god all by yourself no one knows like we know what you've done for us father that's why we praise you the way we do father we give you all the glory we give you all the honor you are the i am that i am you're the beginning and the end you're the first and the last thank you for blessing these people for perfecting all that concerns them father we say thank you take all the glory open their eyes to see those they are supposed to be dead now first to and strategically position them to help these people when the time is right and also lord help them oh god to see their death help us around so that then when they also cry for help help will also be made available for them in the mighty name of jesus thank you abba father because you are prayer answering god thank you abba father because you are a good good god we worship you we give you all the praise we give you all the honor and adoration for in jesus mighty and blessed name we pray with thanksgiving and all the saints shall say a ginormous amen amen and amen but i sing the amen so let's go Amen. 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 Let it be so. Amen. 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 In their life. Amen. I say I pray. Amen. Let it be in their life. Still the prayers. Amen. 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 With the blood of Jesus. Amen. Let it be so. Amen. Amen. Amen in the light as we pray. God bless you all tremendously. May for you bands with all good things. Enlarge your coast and do for you that which no man can do. I always get to say I love you so freaking much. But God loves you way, way more. Have a blast. Happy birthday. Je vous aime, mais je vous aime plus plus fort que moi. J'ai un anniversaire à vous tous. Happy birthday, people. It's time for us to get started with the Bible party. Welcome, Mr. Ama Marcel. Welcome, Alia. Welcome, Azel. Thank you all for joining and stopping by. Let's get ready. It's Bible party time, guys. Are you ready? Ready or not, here I come. Amos chapter 9. I saw the Lord standing upon the altar, and he said, Smite the lintel of the door, that the posts may shake, and cut them in the head, all of them, and I will slay the last of them with a sword. He that fleeth of them shall not flee away, and he that escapeth of them shall not be delivered. Though they dig into hell, then shall my hand take them. Though they climb up to heaven, then will I bring them down. And though they hide themselves in the top of Camel, I will search and take them out thence. And though they be hid from my sight in the bottom of the sea, then will I command the serpent, and he shall bite them. And though they go into captivity before their enemies, then will I command the sword, and it shall slay them. And I will set mine eyes upon them for evil and not for good. And the Lord God of hosts is he that toucheth the land, and it shall melt, and all that dwell therein shall mourn, and it shall rise up holy like a flood, and shall be drowned as by the flood of Egypt. It is he that buildeth his stories in the heaven and had founded his troop in the earth. He that called for the waters of the sea and poured them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. 
Are ye not as children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel, saith the Lord? Have not I brought up Israel out of the land of Egypt and the Philistines from Kaptor and the Syrians from Kir? Behold, the eyes of the Lord God are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith the Lord. For lo, I will command, and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations, like as corn is sifted in a sieve. Yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say, The evil shall not overtake, nor prevent us. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Adam and of all the hidden, which are called by my name, saith the Lord that doeth this. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him that soweth seed, and the mountains shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. And I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel, and they shall build the waste cities, and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards, and drink the wine thereof. They shall also make gardens, and eat the fruit of them. And I will plant them upon their land and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land which I have given them saith the Lord thy God this is the word of the Lord and all the saints shall say a ginormous amen amen and amen amen people and so what did you learn what did you learn what did you learn this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What did you learn? Now let's study the Bible. Please, I love this to be a dialogue, not a monologue. So please, please, please give your contributions. If possible, request to come live or tell me to open your mic so that you can bless us. Okay? Okay? Okie dokie. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much, Azal. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you. Oh, my God. I am so blessed. Thank you for the gifts. I really appreciate it. So let's go. I saw the Lord standing upon the altar, and he said, Smite the lintel of the door, that the posts may shake and curt them in the head. Oh, Evangelist Favor is here. Yay! He that fleeth shall not flee away, and he that escapeth of them shall not be delivered. Though they dig into hell, then shall my hand take them. Though they climb up to heaven, then will I bring them down. And though they hide themselves in the top of Camel, I'll search and take them out then. And though they be hid from my sight in the bottom of the sea, then will I command the serpent, and he shall bite them. And though they go into captivity, before their enemies, then will I command the sword, and I shall slay them, and I will set mine eyes upon them for evil and not for good. <laughs> hey, people of God, see it. When God is set to deal with you, eh? you know, get high place. Do not deceive yourself. Like, even you go fire, God will move you for fire, give sanction. Eh? You go to, He will bring you down, punish you. <laughs> You cannot run. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. The safest place is in Christ. See, I don't know the language to use to tell you. And if I could speak in my local language, I'll speak. If I could speak in my dialect, I could say if I be talk about French, a woman of work I airport in French, sha. See, the safest place to be is in Christ. Please, we're not to know go do you. We're not to know if he catch you, eh? Now, inside Jesus. When I understand that page, when I talk so. Hey, God. I see, 
God says that eh, you go to heaven, it go move you for heaven, bring and die, go, you go go through that punishment. You say you go to the hellfire, he will bring you from there. You say you go to Carmelo, because these were the places that were like secure places. Some of these countries, some of these places that were mentioned, they were places that were like in the old. There were places where people could find solace. They could find some 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 degree or some level of security. But God was saying that they, if they go to all these places, as at this time that he's about to sanction them, if they go to all these places, say, you know, go better for them. He go fish them out, bring them back. He will fish them out and bring them. They will go through the punishment. You go anywhere, you'll be dealt with. He will meet you there. He will meet you there. Escape no deal. The only way to escape is to have accepted Christ and returned to him when the warning was given that this thing was about to happen. That's the only way to escape. Aside that, eh, when Pandora was sanctioned, hmm, you'll be duly dealt with. You understand? Hmm. Woman of God, I, I, seen, eh, I, I was looking at the thing, I was like, say you can't ever go will bring you down. <laughs> And you know, you, you cannot battle with the Lord. No, you can battle with the Lord. Nobody it can. So, so, if you have energy to waste, waste your energy. If not, just stand you one place, say, Papa. Papa, don't do it. I've done it again. Now, picking this. Do with me as you please. See, David. David is your life lad number grab. Papa got angry. I don't do the one again. Hey, I see. Honestly, that guy knew God's soft spot. He just knew God to move button. Like that, boom. Are we saying that the consequences are not going to be there? The consequences were there. But they were not as bad as it would have been like he didn't even say. Imagine the consequences of leaving Eden, the Garden of Eden. We had everything. It was beautiful. It was smooth. It was not stressful. It was not tiring. But just because people do not take responsibility for their action, they were trying to blame some other person. They were excused from the Garden of Eden. Now we this for you today. But even at that, God did still not leave us. He still did not just leave us on our own. He knew that we could not do this on our own. He sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to die for you and I. What's our excuse now? Where to be the excuse? Like, like ha. Yes, yeah, so. You know, I'm, uh, I want to say this, my father and the Lord, and we're just talking about this same kind of thing, about commitment mm -hmm. and about mm -hmm. Christianity today and all of that. And you know, he's a 1960 somebody, so he's I really like this. And, and he's saying that uh, we, we seem to have a lot of excuses today, whereas we have a lot of we have a lot of options. We have a lot at our disposal to make life kind of easier. And it seems that God is even having a, a, a much more tolerance for the young people today than during their time. I was not there, so I cannot tell. But during that time, I said they were taught and brought up in a way in church that either, for example, remember when we were growing up, or I don't know, but I remember those days where if you go to church with, any kind of dress that's sending you back, you're not even entering. For oh, yeah. example, oh, yeah. you, you do this, that or even even in the house, you don't talk to people anyhow. You, you there yeah. is a lot of kind of things here of the Lord. Let me use that word. But today it's like and he says and I was asking him, he says it's because people don't want to commit. In their days oh, yeah. it was such a commit and to commit and be ready to go through thick and thin. For your commitment, but nowadays people want to commit. You know, people want to be one foot in, one foot out. Oh, the expectation of and spoiled. of grace means that just do it anyhow. There's grace. Whereas no. grace is supposed to be what will enable us to not do anyhow. Yes, and I'm so us think that that's to not do anyhow. But well. People are using the grace to do anyhow. Meanwhile, grace came to help us not to do anyhow. I don't understand. I don't understand. And truly, truly, God is really lenient with our generation. Even if not even in our parent generation, eh? You see Ananias and Zafira. 
He was on the was smiling. Was Testament. That was New Testament. So grace was already abounding. I'm telling you, it was on the spot. But now, because God is, they, they, some people think God is slack concerning His promises, as some consider slackness. Eh? Mm -mm, he's not slack. Oh. He's waiting that many more should come to repentance. But you see, this many more that is waiting for to come to repentance will not be forever. You understand? And so you can't be taking that advantage because you don't know you might die tomorrow. Some people are scared of death. Let me remove that. They trumpet my sound tomorrow. Even right now. If it sounds now, are you ready? <laughs> See, eh? We have to. You cannot escape God's wrath. Though. The only way to escape is to return. And you have to return before the punishment. Because when punishment don't start, the punishment will finish before it go do to a one day. You understand? Like yeah. how the, uh, was it Daniel or who? That when he realized they still had to finish their term, they had a term, right? That God had said they were going to be. Yeah, yeah. They had a time that they were supposed to be in captivity. So even though he realized it and he was praying, the captivity began to finish before anything will happen. You understand? So don't wait until you have seen her captivity, the teeth for body, it is show you amber. Before now, you want to return. You go finish your due punishment. If you are. <laughs> If your punishment are two weeks, you go finish two weeks. Then, eh, when you don't learn your lesson, you will know that you shouldn't be playing around like that. Wherever you go, eh, the safest place to hide is in Christ. The, the safest place to hide is in Christ. Now, let me say something. Yeah. People sometimes, uh, people think that, some people think that there's no benefit in in being in Christ, what am I getting? What am I getting? I was discussing with my father today. I said, For me, is that peace? And he said, For him, is that children that he's a child of God and where he would spend his eternity? You know, oh, yeah. said, so it, there's a lot of there's some things that no amount of money can buy. It cannot. People are so after money, 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 status, 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 all of those things, really? which frankly speaking, not do not. Be Mm -hmm. To your soul, mm -hmm. even to your, even to sleep there. That people have I my psychotherapy. They have clients who have money, but they cannot sleep at night. So they are so miserable. Mm -hmm. I didn't sure. even talk to them about God. Oh, they just want them. They don't really want God. They just want the pecs, you know. Yeah. That, 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 that thing is too. That thing is too. I don't think about that life i'm like that life no no, no i don't want that life let me stay with my small plane right here i see i see it's crazy how some people choose life and world the world over christ and they think there's no the the truth that's what we always keep saying and people don't understand eh? there is some aspect of christianity that cannot be explained but experienced if you don't experience it no matter how we explain it to you you probably not get it that's why you think that there's really no um there's no benefits the, because when i was in the world i knew how anxious i used to be when i hear some things or when i'm in some places but now i am at peace it's just like how jesus was in the boats our the wake up now so place the shake jesus was sleeping sound sleep they had to literally wake him up. That's why that is shaky. May woke up. <laughs> he was sound asleep. That's the kind of peace that I have. That's what I said. Eh? That's my own thing that I know that I've gotten from being saved. The peace is truly the peace that passes all understanding. Human, human mind cannot understand it. And that's why sometimes people look at Christians and they're like, this person doesn't even have anything but i see they can see you they can see how peaceful you are a peaceful person is a peaceful person you can see it it shows they're just peaceful they're just happy they're just joyful you know the joy of the lord they just have it and then you're wondering and then when they tell you in all honesty it is the lord you don't believe because you're doing one leg in one leg out that's why you have not experienced it when you take your time and commit, like your father is saying, you commit and say, hey, this God, I will save you all of my heart. 
you will see the difference. You will experience what we're saying. It will not just be that we're talking. We're not just hyping Christianity. It is the reality. You understand? We don't even have good words to make you understand it. There are no right words to explain that feeling, to explain that thing that we experience. I don't know how to explain it sometimes. I just wish there was a way that God could open our hearts, let people see the, the experience, let people be able to get a glimpse of it. Honestly, it's beautiful. <laughs> hey, it is well. And are we saying that because in Christ is beautiful, there are no challenges? Hey, you didn't hear by Bible says offenses must come. It didn't say might. Might means that it will come or not. It must come. Offenses must come. Like it's a certainty. If you're not having one now, it's coming in the future. You have experienced it before. You just came out of one. That's how it is, though. It's a it's on a regular. You think that enemy is going to put you red carpet to be walking on because you're a child of God. <laughs> he wants you back in his camp. So he will do everything within his power to take you back there. But you see, you will have to make a conscious decision that day. You know, go go back. I would see. I will walk the path. I will run the way. I will never be the same again. No, I've locked that door. I don't show, I don't cover the door. I don't block that door. See, they breach that play. I don't bro broke up. It's not jokes. It's not, see, they don't break bridges. You see that bridge for the world? I don't bro broke up. Lock door, pass commod. I can no day. Don't you wear? What are you saying? There's some bridges you have to break. Oh. Pata, pata. You just break it and spoil everything. Don't find spoil button. Presser. There's no fixed button. We don't want. There's nothing in the world, though. It's serious. You need to understand. <laughs> Woman of God, now you don't travel past safe. Now you don't walk past. As in, tell these people, though. Maybe they'll be looking at me and say, do I young Woman of God, you don't travel past. Hey. Can't say I bet Teddy people. Say there's nothing in the world. You have spoken with people of high calibers and all kinds of places. Where listen to me. I used to stop to be appreciated. I used to, you know how you force your body to enter into a small dress right before to just say you look good. You know, you you have to go to certain parties, force yourself to process yourself to not force your to do all kinds of things just to belong, just to you know, just to blend, just to do whatever. Is better we're really looking for in the world. That's why we are looking for relevance. We are looking for, for relevance. We are looking for, for money. I thought all of those things and I was still so empty to the point where I wanted to buy the way. So, frankly speaking, you have seen that. See, I have not told you that. As long as I am your girl, you know that. I am, you cannot allow me to go to any kind of place. So, I don't you. I've surrendered completely to him. So, you cannot. Yeah, don't know me. I'm telling you, no, please don't look in back. There's nothing in the world. There's everything in Christ. Everything. You just have to be fully committed. It's not the one leg in, one leg out thing. That thing is stressful. And in that scenario, you're in the devil's camp. Is the devil that, of course. that is convincing you to be feeling comfortable that anyway you're doing small Jesus now, so you're a Jesus girl. You're not a Jesus girl. You're not a Jesus boy. If you're not fully doing Jesus, you are not in Jesus' camp. That's how it is. You can be in the devil camp and do small Jesus and do small world. Though. He accepts. It's acceptable in his camp. But in Jesus' camp, it's Jesus. If you need to do Jesus, you're not in Jesus' camp. Don't console yourself. Do not let the enemy deceive you. And the enemy is doing that to so many people because you know that so many people want to feel assured somehow that oh, well, I'm, I'm a child of God. Yes, they are doing all the time. And he will give you pets. The devil gives you pets. He will give you He will. The things that you do to keep those pets. Oh, God. 
filthy kingdom. They, they, they wash the earth there. It's sad. Father, thank you. Jesus, thank I'm you. telling you. Father, Father, thank you for salvation. I am grateful for salvation. I was, I was telling you now that the Holy Spirit told me to dress up the way I dressed up. And I looked at myself and I, I, I mean, laughed. Hey, hey. I said, God don't take over. Yeah. This okay. girl, God has taken you over. Lie, lie to lie, lie. You're yeah, God. <laughs> and I love it. You know, and I, I know. You know, and, and I, that doesn't think nothing about me. So I need to wonder why we would so badly want people to to appreciate us and flatter us and pamper us. Do us nothing. Yeah. And sometimes, even inside you, eh, you're not comfortable. You see, you see this human like this. Our conscience eh, can police us. One more of the Spirit of God. We know there are some things that we do that our conscience is telling us, and the one, uh, princess, you self. Like, but just because you want that applause, you just want that thing of People should know that you belong. You are, and it's those people, eh? The ones that will praise you, eh? The next minute, she don't have Jesus. No, 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 no. These people they be seeing Hosanna in the highest. They welcome Jesus. Now the same group of people they follow say crucify him. <laughs> you see, you might be so. If you are relying on the on the arm of flesh, eh? They will go pay you. <laughs> you go fall down so carry a two foot there for up. Honestly. It will so fail you. <laughs> it is well. Welcome, welcome, Mom Ukaria. Welcome, Mr. Sean Kiliano. Yes, yes, yes. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you. So we are on verse five. Okay. And the Lord of hosts is he that toucheth the land, and it shall melt, and all that dwell therein shall mourn. And it shall rise up holy like a flood, and shall be drowned as by the flood of Egypt. It is he that builded his stories in the heaven, and had founded his troop in the earth. He that calleth forth the waters of the sea, and poured them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. It's God who created everything. He's the one who created everything. So if he's telling you that he wants to bless you, what do you think he's going to withhold from you? I don't understand. God, there is nothing. He gave the most priceless, in fact, the best of the best of the gifts ever. He's only begotten son. What would he now withhold from you? See, my sister was there oh, about her food, contented. Oh. She wasn't grumbling. Some people grumble about that thing on the air. I'm not talking about unbelievers, so children of God. Papa, go, you see me. I'm your child. See the kind of thing that I'm going to eat now today. Now, which kind of life it is? Hey, Papa God, I know it says you. No, me, and it says you be God. God, the picking you, you know, deny, sha. But the grumble is not necessary. That's how some of that person was just like, Lord, I'm grateful that I even have rice to eat. Too. Some people know who get. Job. They don't even know where they're going to see the next meal. They've not eaten today, and they're not even sure if they're going to eat today. You have food and you're grumbling that there are not some particular things in the food. Like the food is not like posh. Like, you know, he has all these obstacles and all these innuendums and all these ingredients. Meanwhile, somebody doesn't, he's not even sure they're going to eat. It's the Lord who created everything. The birds, they do not do nothing, but they eat. The lilies, they do nothing. They are clothed in so much beauty. Then you think you, who is a child of God, while you were yet sinner, Christ died for you. Now you are a child of God, joined hands with Christ. Now, now we God go take ignore you. Like, are you for real? Are you for real? Does it even make sense? Jesus will come and die when you did not deserve it. I mean that you did it. Then now that you have qualified to be... Please now, let's sit and think about it again. Let's sit and reason it now. Welcome, Mr. Rian Epetiri. Welcome. Oh my God. Like, the creator of the universe creator of the heavens 
they won't call for things that are not as though they are and they come to being darkness was filling the whole place and he says let them be light light show hey what are you worried I about saying, i was saying my job that as long as i have break even if i lose my voice i will call the name of god i will call the name of jesus and i know that you will come to god. whatever situation because the of of situation but you will come to for me a way that i oh, will yeah. have my it all oh yeah that is so important so why when you try to oh, yeah. because things are oh, you want to do it or you do want to you are constantly around the clock struggling. I know people, for example, in America, they are doing before seven working. It is when they are in their home, all kinds of stuff. They are still calculating, eating, When do you sleep? They say, My life, I'm very, very fast. Oh, yes, I love you like that. Yo, that peace in the Lord. Let me be laid back and lazy and peaceful. No, 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 no. no. I really to do God's will. And someone will take their time and want to walk their whole life 247. And then you, you have also chosen to want to walk your whole life 247 for God, no problem. And to think that we are all adults. Hey, hey, you get us a be for the life. Oh. So for my own work. I'm telling he. Somebody will choose to spend their 24 hours working for another human being. Me, I've decided to take my own 24 hours to work for God. Now, problem. Where's the car? Where's the house? Where's the private jet? That's the problem. I have seen. Did they have the private jet and the car? They, do they have seven heads? Do they are they um, are they in another planet? Are they in Mars and then I'm on Earth? We're well, all on Earth. And the, the, the funny thing is that they. Eh, where we are going to end is what important is important to some of those people all those things when they die do they carry it and go along no all of us dust we came from we too got returned to dust and the lord compared my soul what, what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul my soul is compared to the whole world and there is nobody, not even one human being, who will ever get the whole world. So it means that uh, me being safe, I'm richer than you. Because my soul being safe is compared to gaining the whole world. And no one single human being can gain the whole world. All of these Elon Musk and the rest who are going to the moon and coming back, they don't own them. They don't own me. They don't own all these other things in the world. But my soul is worth more than all these things. So who is now wealthier? As in calculation of wealth. When they even go to the moon and come back and so what? That handsome man is still not dead today. My sister. Did he carry all the things that he had? He didn't carry. They didn't bury him. His grave, eh? It was dark according to his size. Not be according to his wealth. It was according to his size. If now five feet tall, now five feet tall the dick. Now five feet long the dick. They no dig according to his wealth. Ah. They didn't bury him with his houses, his cars, and all those things. Now a different person will call him Jura. Which is well. And those are the things that were allowing to rule us. No, money should not rule you. Money should be a servant to you. Like you should be dishing it out to do things. And that's the only reason why we need money to do kingdom business. Yeah? Not that the money will be ruling us, that we cannot live our lives. We will be able to kill people. We'll be able to. Ah, by now. It is well. <laughs> it says, Are you? not as children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel, say the Lord. Have not I brought up Israel out of the land of Egypt, and the Philistines from Captor, and the Syrians from Kir? Behold, the eyes of the Lord God are upon the sinful kingdom, 
and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth. Saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, say the Lord. Destruction will come upon people. Who, but you see, children of God, they have assurance that they'll be saved. You wonder why some crazy things will be happening in the world and it's not affecting children of God. It's because the assurance is here. Bible has said it. These people, they will be destroyed. Though. But you see the house of Jacob. It will not be utterly destroyed. And, you see and, the children of God. It will not be utterly destroyed. And the Lord means it because he has done it before. So when yeah. you say it, 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 it means everything. The everything. blessing as well as the... He, he did it during Noah's time. The whole world, eight people only. Solomon and Gomorrah, three people only. Only. Ah. Who will do, do it though? He will do it. He may be play. God honors his word. Praise the one who created everything. So wait to back to. I said to myself that if God could save three people out of millions, if he could save um eight people out of millions, see it. Children of God are much more than eight and three in this our season. So uh, believe me, he will wipe out the rest. If it comes to that, so it's based on you, you making your right standing with God for your salvation. Nobody can collect salvation for you. If we could collect salvation for people, I don't collect for all my family members. So start collecting now for my friends. Ah, see, I don't collect before. Cuckoo collect all tin for my family. I want my family to be stable. Hey, honestly. I want my entire family to be saved. Afro don't collect salvation before. Before now. Before call. Afro don't collect everything. But no, you cannot. No matter how you love this person, no matter how you care about this person, they have to make that decision by themselves. And that's why it says, with the heart, man believe it. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Now, by the way, small picking and no feed do one. So they are they are qualified if they die to go to heaven because people keep asking those questions i don't know why they're asking those kinds of questions so now what about children who cannot speak that's why it's you who can speak that will be held accountable because bible says with the hard man believer if you don't reach the stage of belief you believe you know believe you know confess you go cuckoo go and fire but you see those little children who do not know they are left or right if they die they'll go to heaven Ever. oh yes so begin to stop bothering about the children what about yourself you were there the age of accountability when you know your left and your right be bothered about yourself where those children will go to should not bother you <laughs> where you will end up should be what will bother you because my individual individual <laughs> hey somebody will not go and answer your salvation call for you somebody will not sit on the judgment seat on your behalf. God, God will not be saying, oh, let's call your father and your mother. Maybe they made you not to accept Christ. Let's deal with them first. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's deal with your father that made it hard for you to, to accept Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's you alone, no? It's you alone. And you'll be seeing those things that God will be showing you if it's a video that I show you or they show you. You will know inside your heart that you have no excuse. That your father excuse that you want to give air. It goes so wipe out of your mind. You will just see how guilty you are. Clearly. Clearly. And that's how our consciences are always making us understand that we are guilty for these things that we are giving excuses for, but we'll still go ahead and give the excuses. Because our human mind will be telling us that Hey, but why is your father treating you like that? But why is your mother treating you like that? It's not fair. It's not fair. It's not fair. It's not fair. True, true. But what is God expecting of you? You do his will. And if you're not saved, how will you even know what he wants you to do? You will not know. If you're not studying the word of God, how will you know what he expects of you? You will not know. Study the word of god is not a task oh. it's a beautiful thing because you know the promises that god has in store for you you know the things that god... 
you know who you are in Christ. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. It's not stress as people think it is. That's where we get our solace. That's where we get our comfort. That's where we know. We know that we're coming out of every situation from a victorious point, from a vintage point, because God has already won the victory for us. We're just claiming it. We're just walking into our victory. We really fight on serious battle. But if you have not seen it, if you are not reading the word of God, how do you know that? And that's why you'll be in panic mode. That's why you'll be afraid. That's why you'll be anxious. That's why you'll be stressed out. Even when you don't need it to be. It is well. It is well with us. It says, for lo, I will command and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations, like as corn is sifted in a sea. Yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. Yeah. The time is coming, oh. though. We're seeing all the things are happening. I'll be like, oh, the wicked are doing any, any, how these people are doing like that, you know. And they come, they go shift that. You know how they shift that, you know. I don't know if everybody knows how they shift, you know? anyways. I said, nothing. God said, "The one and not to know for that." Sometimes when we even see that for some small, small one there for that, He said, "The one not to know before that." It means that eh, you cannot escape it. If you you are in Christ, you'll be in Christ. If you are not in Christ, it will be so clear and so obvious. You cannot escape it. We think we can play. We can play mago mago. We can fool pastors. We can fool leaders. We can fool our parents. We, you cannot fool God. And you cannot even fool yourself. You know now. You know that you cannot even fool yourself. <laughs> it says, All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say, The evil shall not overtake or prevent us. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen, and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old. You see how God loves us. Yes, so you know, because there is a remnant and there is always and there has always been a on that. So oh yeah. To, to to walk to be to be among these remnants, you understand? Mm -hmm. It might not be convenient, it might not be cool, it will not be comfortable, it will be weird. But I would rather oh, yeah. be I would rather be a fool for God now, you know. I would rather be blah, 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 and just give me on the safe side. That yeah. God, uh, he loves us, yes. He is a just God. Oh, yes. And slow to anger doesn't mean he doesn't get angry. He does. He does. And, and that's why I always say that god's justice works as much as his love works because some people feel like his love is just supposed to just be overcrowding or canceling or ruling out his justice and it's because of god's justice and his love that he did not call adultery another name when david a man after his heart committed it david went through his due sanction the consequences were very there and evident did he forgive him? Yes. Did David ask for forgiveness? Yes. But the consequences were there. Mm -hmm. So be careful. Don't think that, oh, because you're a child of God, you're a daughter of Zion, you can just do any, 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 out. The consequences will be there. Yes. He loves you. Yes. He will restore you. Yes. And all those things. But you will go through the due process. You go through the due process. So just like our, 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 our woman of God has said, there's always a remnant. Do all that you can to be part of the remnant. Do all that you can to be part of the end time army that God is raising. He will build his own. He says he will build his church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It's God that is building this end time army. Are you in the number? Join the winning team. Hey, my French people will say, on the change by the Kipki guy. Jesus, the team now are winning team. Ah, 
Go and inside, they go tell you. I don't tell you my own feelings. That's the winning team. Join the winning team. It says that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all of the hidden which are called by my name, saith the Lord that doeth this. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him that soweth seed. And the mountains shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. <laughs> Patience is virtue, people. You see the things that these people will be enjoying? These are the people that oh. are the remnant. You want to be among them. Oh. You want to be at the time where there's overtaking. Hmm? You think that right now nothing is happening to you. you just, God is planning to bless us and reward us on this earth. Before what happened? Because some people are thinking like, ah, but why is it that it's only in heaven? Why may he bless you for the earth? No, 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 no. Come and read. Come and read with me. Now, now Bible I you read, so it's not my word. It's inside Bible. We're on Amos chapter 9. Read oh, we're around verse 13. <laughs> read it there. It's in the word of God. And I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel, and they shall build the waste cities. Now you need to cause them to build up. He's the one. Hey, Lord, I shall be among the remnant. Oh, I shall be there. Papa, I shall be there. Papa, if you think that you should give me hard crack, you give me that hot conk. Must stay on track. Papa, conquer. Anytime. If my food want Ben corner so Papa Naka push up. Hey, anything or duo, Papa me a get for there among the remnant. Hey, okay. Hmm. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Papa, thank you. I've divided them. I'm like, oh, that Holy Spirit, I bet, 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 now you get this so if you don't help me I'm on my I see I don't go fit I want to every day of my life I don't want that makes me to dwell in this treasure that makes me to be aware to be conscious that reverence is always there yeah that's me speaking I don't want me I don't want I don't want I don't want chance I don't want no Chance, no enter one chance. We want to serve the Lord and serve the Lord. We don't want one chance, Papa. If we are just about to bend corner, Papa Nakam. If you go broke the foot, put a man stand on top of the correct road. Broke and put a man stand on top of the correct road. Honestly, because we understand the importance of being in God's perfect will, we understand the importance of being the remnant. We understand it. We know how important it is. And it says, and they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. You don't go walk another person chop up. <laughs> you go do the work, you go enjoy the proceeds. It's here on earth too. She they build vineyard up ahead, not for heaven. Heaven will don't do these things. It's here on earth. They shall also make gardens and eat the fruits thereof. You could plant, you go enjoy. Go talk. And I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land, which I have given them, saith the Lord. What? Establish. The Lord will establish you. But you see, before I want to establish you, you don't go through the process. These people will be there while the other ones will be dying. These people will be there while the other ones will be suffering the suffering. Is it not me that has been telling you lately? Most of the people that are calling me are only sending me out. This their person has died. This one, it has been pinning me. So they will be dead. They will be seeing how these people will be dying, how the other ones will be going. But they are the remnant. So they go kuku day and then they will enjoy the rewards. So you have to go through the process. You have to hold on. You have to be like Job, who said that thing. You see, it's it. they will do your worst, but you see, I will never curse God. What was the goal? The goal was for Job to curse God and say, Papa, you don't overdo. No, come on, go you. 
the wife, Job's wife, was ready to volunteer to be a widow. She was volunteering to be a widow. Say, Mama, sir, curse God and die. Unto what? Unto what? So, when he curses God and die, you do her. See, truth be told, eh, the enemy will push you to your wit's end. I say he will push you to your limits. Yeah. Be ready. He will push you to your limits. Why? This job like this, eh? He was not, he had no business with the devil. He was cuckoo going about his duties. Now God go carry brag for front satano. Have you considered? <laughs> hey God. Go to get bragging right, so don't be small matter. He said, <laughs> he look, he don't look himself and joke, joke the service soon. So he had the sweetie. He then told as they would say, Have you considered? Job was quite quiet, though, doing his will of God. And the... now God draw the attention to Job. Have you considered my servant Job? Now, Bible talk. Now God draw the way attention towards Job. I said, God get calm. God say, you see the one too. I know the picky. Try him. They will say, ah, you don't give it this, this, this. I know, save you. Jesus said, devil, why are you get myopic thoughts so? You think this boy said, you think say Job deceived me? You think I will come brag for you about Job now because of things I don't give? Come on the things now. He removed. You know devil made the great defeat. He now start look for other things. You don't move the thing the way claim say, now the thing that way Job deceived God. Job never cares with that. Shame don't carry. But you know in a great defeat. So you keep going and going and going. But you know, thanks be to God that the devil has a limit. God gave him brag, the right to do and do and do, but they saw he could not. So don't, don't be afraid. Don't panic. When you're going through those things, when the enemy is tempting you and pushing you, you should know that he has a limit. He can do up until this level. God will leave it. Okay. He has a limit. He has a limit. So there is going to be a time. There will be restoration. God will give you all that thing. And just be patient. Hang in there a little bit. Hang in there a little more. The Lord is coming through for you. The Lord is coming through for you. Hang in there a little bit more. So people of God, this is where we're wrapping up with the chapter today for today. It has been an awesome session. I just love it when Evangelist Mary Fever is here supporting us. I love it when you guys are in the comment section giving us your own opinions, giving us what the Lord has dropped in your spirit through the chapter, giving us those Jesus things you have in your heart and those God things you have in your heart. We are very, very grateful. And so today we're going to be praying that the Lord should give us the grace to stay, to hang in there. So that when the time comes for us to enjoy all the goodies that he has in store for the remnant, we're going to be part of it and we're going to enjoy. We shall never be a castaway. Nobody under the sound of my voice will end up being a castaway. We cannot preach the gospel and end up being a castaway. Lie, lie to lie, lie. It's not going to, it ain't going to happen. It ain't happening. It ain't happening. So you have to make up your mind today. You have to agree with me and say we are agreeing here and making up our minds that we're going to be intentional about our Christian work. And of course, we will serve the Lord and we will not become castaways. We will study the word of God. We will commune with God and we would know what to do, when to do it and how to do it so that we're going to be the remnant and will not be a castaway. And we'll enjoy all the things that the Lord has promised that the remnants will enjoy. 
Father, we come before your throne of grace, O oh Lord. We bring before you all your children all over the world. But you're going to give us the tenacity and the strength and the grace that is necessary for us to hang in there till the time when you promised that you're going to give us all that will be a blessing to us, just like you promised your children. Lord, I pray, oh God, that your word is going to be made manifest in our lives. People are going to see your good works in us and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Help us to trust the process. Help us to hang in there until our time is due. We know that in your time, you make all things beautiful. And we know you beautify our lives. We are grateful. Lord, because you're a faithful father, your word never goes out and comes back void. It always accomplishes the purpose for which it is sent. Lord, we are grateful for the accomplishment that is about to happen in our lives, even this last days. Thank you, Lord God, for in Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Tomorrow is another day, so I was waiting for someone to tell us the book that we're about to start tomorrow and nobody has said it yet and we are signing off so i'm gonna help you the book we're starting off with tomorrow is the book of obadiah and obadiah has just one chapter so yes we're going to the 31st book of the bible and of course this book has just one chapter and i, I can't remember how many verses he has but he has just one chapter and so that's what we're going to be doing tomorrow by the grace of God. And yes, thank God, it's going to be Friday. And then from then on, we're going for weekend. So we'll be starting another book as well after the book of Obadiah. Thank you all so much. Tomorrow is another day. Don't miss out. Be here with us and enjoy all that we enjoy in the presence of God. It has been a beautiful one here. I am loving all that is going on. I hope you are too. We have our audio Bible on TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, um, all social media platforms you can find us on, literally. We have our audio Bibles on there so you can listen and grow your faith because the word of God says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. How best? It's a win-win, people. You're listening to your girl's voice and you're listening to the word of God. Growing your faith at the same time. Yeah. Don't you think it's a good idea? That's right. So we are thanking God for an amazing session and we're wrapping up today. Tomorrow, let's be here by the grace of God together and enjoy the presence of God. Father, we thank you for another amazing day that you may rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for another awesome session that you've given us today. We thank you for every single person who participated in one day, way or the other, replenish their sauce. Especially our very own evangelist, Mary Favor. We are grateful that she was here today. Lord, that you're going to empower us some more and some more and give her the grace to do all the things that you assigned her to do. And each and every one of us who is going to stumble upon this video today, Lord, you're going to give us the grace as well. And we decree and declare that no one no one who is under the sound of my voice today is going to preach the gospel and become a castaway. But we all are going to end up spending eternity with God in heaven. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because we know you're going to do all that you say you do. Let your word be engrafted on the flesh and of all hearts so that we're going to go there back and we'll believe in the pistols read of man. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering us. For in Jesus' name I pray. And all the saints shall say, Ajinomus, Amen. Amen and amen. <laughs> okay, guys, see you all tomorrow. We're signing up from Zuckerville and then we'll get to Popoville. Ciao, ciao. Welcome, Williams. Thank you. Thank you. Big wing. Ciao.